Hi, I'm Charlie Matotuyela with Blue Bear Flutes and BlueBearFlutes.com where you'll find some of the latest and greatest Native American flutes available on the web today. We do specialize in flutes that are natural, that are more original, and that are simple. We don't want to make something that's overly elaborate, which I feel like undoes what a Native American flute actually is. So you'll find a lot of flutes that look very simple on our website and our other uh, media outlets and places that we sell flutes. But just a very simple selection because that's what uh, Native American flutes originally were. Not a whole lot of lacquered, really fancy uh, totems, although we do offer a very, you know, different totems. Um, anyway, so that's, that's what we've got going on. Today's video is to help out flute players and sometimes in some cases flute makers, um, but primarily flute players who are having a problem um, with a flute jumping octave. Sometimes a flute will jump octave because you want it to, and that is a technique that many of us can use, and I'll show you something about that in just a moment. Uh, however, a lot of people have a problem with a flute jumping octave unintentionally, and that really does, uh, you know, cause a problem. It really does because it, it makes people start saying things like squeak, and squeak is not really a word I like to use very often because that's a very generic description of a sound that could be a hundred different things going on. So that having been said, we'll go ahead and jump into this. I'll show you really quick here uh, what jumping octave is and what causes it and sometimes why you would want to use it and sometimes why you won't. I do have other videos about this topic, by the way, and if you get a chance, I'd suggest scrolling through some of our flute playing videos uh, to find more information on that. There's also at least one or two videos that I can remember that we talked about uh, flute making process that would cause a flute not to jump octave. So there's a, there's a few things we've got going on. First, I'm going to show you a couple of non-native flutes. This one many of you recognize. Uh, this flute right here is actually the culprit for why it is that most people believe that Native American flutes should sound low in tone. Uh, it's because in the original Cowboys and Indians movies and the old westerns that had Native American flute in it, this is what they were playing. This is a side-blown, transverse, orchestral, you can name it a bunch of different things, steel flute. Um, this one's probably made out of nickel, <laughs> nickel and brass. But, uh, but this is a side blown flute, and its lowest note is actually quite low. And that's what you hear on the Cowboys and Indians movies, not something that is much higher in tone, like a high C flute or a high B flute or something like that, which is historically much more accurate. So just to give you an idea, is one octave. Now watch my fingers. I haven't changed my finger in position. So you can actually blow faster and change the articulation, the shape of your embouchure, how your mouth blows across the edge of this, this uh, metal mouthpiece here, and you can change the tone. That is, um, I guess, uh, jumping octave on purpose is basically what that is. And here is a maple fife. A lot of flutes that are designed in this particular way are made to jump octave so that you can go from one key to the next. Now, like on this maple fife, for example, it doesn't have as smooth or as rigid a surface as the inside of this silver transverse flute. And it also is a little shorter the shorter really makes a difference also, but uh, you can play about two octaves on it, although I can play the top note and a couple of the, uh, the octave above it. Wouldn't you know my mouth's right out while I was talking. So you can actually get up there, but if you hear it, the next note up in the third octave there is a little flat. And that's because, there again, this is a short, tiny little flute versus one that's designed for orchestra that um, has a little larger inside diameter. Now, I'll tell you something else too, quite interesting. The size of this flute makes some of the difference in the tone. However, if you'll notice, it and my low E here are actually very close in size. And once again, this dude here can play play pretty low, but because of the direction of the air swirling around in circles inside of it when you blow across this mouthpiece, um, it actually will allow it to make a little bit lower note than this guy right here. 
This is not, there again, a historical example of a Native American flute. This is something that is uh, kind of called for on a lot of occasions if you're playing with another instrument. Uh, it is something we get requests for. This is actually the one of the flutes that I play the opening. <laughs> that uh, excuse me this is actually my D <laughs> I think I set my E somewhere else but the D here is actually one of them as well I played on the E and a D and also an F sharp uh, which most people don't recognize the difference in which uh, <laughs> should tell you something but there you go uh, anyway um, having this flute here jump octave is not something you wanted to do because I mean not when you're just playing a standard note because this flute is designed to play basically one octave. Now, if you watch, if I blow really fast and cover some specific holes, and do something that I know how to do, I can play a couple of notes into the top octave, um, but typically Native American flutes of this type, the ones with a little block up here, um, they don't have a second octave so much to say. You might be able to get about three or four notes and sometimes maybe five notes into the top octave that may be okay. Uh, however, historically they're not designed to be like that. Um, this is another example of a Native American flute. This is one of my own design but it is designed similar to a kina which has a, a mouthpiece right here. And a kina you can play, see if I can do it where you can see, just keeping my fingers covered. I'm not going to uncover any holes. This flute was not designed with the intentions of jumping octave. A kenna typically uh, is designed to play at least, you know, about another uh, another range into the next octave, but not necessarily uh, completely. Like like this one, you know, four or five notes is really probably tops. You can see my mouth change because of the width of this. Uh, mouthpiece here. You can see my mouth change shape uh, when I blow faster. So that's something that I want to point out that there are Native American flutes that are designed to play something into the next octave, but not really a whole lot there again. Um, but when a flute jumps octave unintentionally, that's usually because some fingers are not covered completely. And that's what a lot of people call a squeak. Um, and depending on the range of the flute, once again, if you were playing a, a higher tone flute like this little dude, that kind of thing comes from overblowing and partially covering holes. Now, if you, if you overblow on purpose and the holes are covered completely, then you can actually do something else, which most of my drone flutes, this is a drone, it's got two holes uh, for flutes and two mouthpieces and two sets of fingerings. There's actually one on the back of the drum chamber. So I can actually change a note back here. There's something else I can do with a lot of my drones. Um, not all of them will do this. And there again, it's not hit and miss, but it's something we try to do more specifically with the higher end drones than we do with the bottom end ones, which this would be considered a bottom. But if you'll notice on the drone chamber is a bottom note, which matches all holes covered over here. So now maybe partially covering the block so that they sound like they're in tune with each other. So there's actually two flutes playing at the same time. So you can see what's going on there, but what you may not realize is there's something I can do intentionally on the drone chamber, and that's blow fast. So I'm just gonna watch my fingers, nothing's gonna uncover. So that note on this particular drone has been tuned to match the top note of the fingering. So So you can play three notes on the drone chamber that way. So 
I'm intentionally overblowing and causing it to jump octave into a note that fortunately I spent a lot of extra time on this one to tune it into that note. And there you have it. So um, with this flute, as you noticed, when I first started playing it, and the block was partially covering the hole, and I've got troubleshooting videos for, for drones and what have you, so this isn't really one of those. But you hear how it's wobbling there? That's because one chamber is blowing a little differently, and it's partially covering the hole here. Now I'm gonna set this drone down, because that's probably about all I need to show you on it, uh, but I'm gonna show you from here on. This flute, no matter who makes your Native American flute, if it has a block up here that can move, this flute can also partially cover the hole. Now, right now it's covering it in a way that's not preferable. And it's blowing a top octave. How about that? I'm gonna blow really soft. If you blow at a regular rate of, of uh, air pressure, it'll cause it to jump octave. That's because the block was covering the hole. See, it takes a little extra work to make it happen here. There again, like I showed you a moment ago, it could be that your fingers are not covering the holes completely. So you can get all kinds of squirrely notes out of that thing. It sounds like a moose. Um, but one thing that'll cause it is this block sitting here sideways, which is not uncommon. I mean, it's loose, so it can be moved anywhere. Or if it's covering the sound hole a lot more, that'll cause it to jump octave. Um, one other thing that'll cause it to jump octave that you have control over is possibly a piece of debris under the block. I have videos about untying and tying it back on, and uh, I also have a, a great flute troubleshooting video for beginners. Honestly, I call it for beginners because beginners usually have this problem more than anybody, but anybody can watch a video, so keep that in mind. Um, but uh, that troubleshooting video will tell you It'll show you also to take the block off, blow anything out, and then tie it back on. And usually that fixes a, a lot of problems. Uh, so one, uh, and, and really the reason I'm telling you this, and the reason I showed you these flutes here too, is because what's, what's happening is the air is blowing faster. When the air blows faster, the flute tends to want to play the next octave because it's traveling faster through the flute. It doesn't have time to expand fully and, and uh, cause that real full note that we're looking for. It just shoots right on through it and makes a really high tone, sometimes squeaky. Um, but uh, that really, the, the speed of the air, you controlling it, is, is a technique in some cases. I've got videos about using it as a technique, but... for a technique in overblowing uh, but like I say when the airspeed is too fast it'll cause it to jump octave um, and then finally the last thing which really is the last thing you should consider about what could be causing it to jump octave is if the flute has a crack or if let's say your dog got a hold of it put a little tiny bite mark through it and the bite mark penetrated the inside of the flute anytime that there's an air escape uh, with the flute, it'll cause it to jump octave as well. So that's something to consider. And of course, covering it up. You know, I, I have uh, one flute I have a tendency to put another flute inside of because of the size of it, and it's real convenient. But that restriction there will also cause it to jump octave. So take a look inside of your flute. If it looks okay there, uh, and you've checked everything else, then look for a crack. It could be that maybe there's a, I'm not gonna say glue separation. Glue normally doesn't separate. That's some kind of mystical mumbo jumbo that people who make flutes that aren't glued uh, usually throw out to people, which we make some that aren't glued too. So, um, you know, that's, that's just something people throw out there, but it's usually not a, a seam separation. It's usually a crack. And a lot of times a crack is something that you might have bumped it too hard or slammed it in the car door or somebody else did and you didn't know about it. But a crack in the flute, once again, is the last thing I would suggest looking for it is a possibility, however. So anyway, I hope this helps everybody out, answers a couple of questions for people wondering what causes a Native American flute to jump octave. And uh, if you haven't found all of them yet, make sure you go back to the beginning of my channel and look at all the videos because um, our YouTube, I guess, uh, amount of array of, of videos is pretty extensive. Nine times out of 10, when a flute maker or flute player asks me a question, 
I usually refer them back to a video. Uh, this question here was actually inspired by someone asking the question on uh, uh, YouTube, and we decided that, hey, let's go ahead and make a video specific about that. Although, there again, I do have countless other videos referring to, to uh, Jumping Octave. Um, but uh, it's something that, uh, that helps us to decide what kind of videos to make. I've been making Native American flutes for a long time uh, and been playing them for a long time, recorded a lot of my music, and we just uh, we like to share what it is that we do. So if you have any other questions, don't hesitate to post them in the comments or send us a message or what have you, and I'm sure we'll find a way to help you. Once again, this is Charlie Montetuiella for Blue Bear Flutes and bluebearflutes.com. We hope to see you here again very soon. And don't forget to check out Blue Bear Flutes everywhere else you can find it. I think we're Blue Bear Flutes on Instagram, Blue Bear Flutes on Facebook, Blue Bear Flutes now on TikTok, uh, and whatever new hoops they decide that we need to jump through in life, I'll be there. So you guys take care. Charlie Montetuiella signed out. See you again very soon. Happy flute playing.